right, I'm going to try to get this up here where you can see it. And if you see that, uh, see that knuckle right there, that steering knuckle, there we go. the rusty one. I have doused it with uh, with blaster a few times, and what I'm doing is, uh, if you see the little, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, the union on the bottom, if you can get it into view there, if I can get it into view, anyway, you can see where it's sitting, I have turned it on that, uh, I'm trying to get all four ends of that U-joint saturated. So what I did is, see if I can get a better view from up here. I think that's better. What I did is I filled up that bottom cap area a few times and I'm letting it soak. And then I'm articulating the wheel, just turning the steering wheel where the next cap is, is going to be down. Um, and we'll let gravity flow the blaster into the next cap. I've already done the one on the top and the one on the bottom on the top part of the shaft. Now I'm doing the, the ear, the whatever you want to call it, that's on the um, top and bottom of the uh, bottom shaft next. So you'll, you'll see in a minute. Oh. You, you can't see it. What am I doing here? There. There. See the bolt is on the top. Is that in focus? Bolt is on the top. Anyway, I haven't sprayed it yet. It looks a little blurry to me. It could be the smoke. But, um, that's why I'm trying to do it on a cold engine because you start spraying this top joint and it just loads you up with smoke you can't see nothing so that's why I've never really got it lubricated good I tried this before and it didn't seem to do anything but seems like it is doing something now I started up and turned it again As you can see the uh, the bolt is completely on the bottom now so now we're working on that that little bottom cap see the top of the cap you're not going to get any kind of lubrication in there um, the top of the cap would be um, on the very end very uh, I don't know how to explain it but anyway the cap is is like like a cup and right now on the bottom part of that fork which is the right word for it fork um, the bottom part of that fork there uh, there is a little cup that goes in there and it holds a bunch of needle bearings and that is what we're trying to lubricate so now I'm gonna load this one up like I did the other one and hope some seeps down in there there's supposed to be a rubber little washer around there to keep any debris out um, but hoping, I'm hoping that's deteriorated enough. That's probably why moisture has got in there and kind of seized up the bearings a little bit. At least I'm hoping that's the problem. If this works, then I'm going to look for either another a new shaft or uh, I'll take this one off. Maybe put a new U-joint in it or I'll just let it soak in a vat of uh, diesel fuel for a couple days or over a weekend and uh, and then work it around and get it get it working again I'll do something but I need to find out this is the problem before I go any further okay my procedure on this is I uh, I spray it down to get in here where you can see it good I spray the u-joint down um, 
and then I let it set for a little while and then I come back and I spray it down again and I come back and I just keep I keep doing that because it's gonna run off for every every knuckle every uh, cap I've done that um, and I'm running low on blaster now from doing that I don't know if anybody's ever ever told you before but I read on the video I go on YouTube a lot and I think I saw it on YouTube maybe but they said that these little dots they put on the uh, on the cans are supposed to be what direction the straw is because uh, there's a little straw that goes down in the can and uh, they say that's the direction that the straw is going in because to get to the bottom of the can you can't have it you know stop that far from the can you, you gotta make contact with the bottom and with these cans being you know kind of convex shape they go in that's what that fancy word means convex <laughs> um, anyway when they go in they got to go to one side or the other and I heard that that little dot is the direction they go in and I've tried it a few times you know I, I, I tend to uh, not believe everything I hear but uh, if you try to spray this can at an angle like that I think that'd be straight just at an angle if you try to spray it like that I was getting a lot of air and mist and all over the place until I turned the nozzle headed that direction so the straw would be kind of you know down in the liquid more because the liquid would follow gravity it's spraying beautiful now because I want to use every drop I can uh, the, these are not that expensive but they're not really cheap either and uh, I like to save money that's the whole purpose of my channel right now is trying to save money wherever I can and uh, anyway I just want to let you know that little tidbit all right well I've used all my blaster and all my patience in this and uh, now I'm gonna take this puppy for a drive because you know turning your wheel when you're standing still that doesn't really Oh, ding, ding, ding. Turning your uh, wheel when you're standing still, that doesn't really tell you anything to speak of. I mean, yeah, maybe it feels a little bit better. But I'm going to drive it and see. Eh, it still feels a little bit draggy. say if it's better or not maybe maybe it is maybe it's not I mean I can turn it with one finger so far but it should be better than that. Well, I think I'll take off that knuckle now that it's nice and hot and hard to work on. I think I'll take it off and 
I'm not going to pull it all the way in the garage because I want to get my floor messy if I got to spray some more blaster. And we'll see. Check air suspension off. We'll see what's uh, the outcome of that. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you spray a bunch of blaster and the exhaust manifold is right behind it. You get a bunch of a bunch of smoke that you can't even see through. And it's worse than it looks on camera. But uh, I'm going to articulate that around. You like that word, don't you? Um, I'm going to articulate that around where the bolt is uh, easy to get to. And I'm going to try pulling that arm down after I get that bolt out. I'll try pulling that arm that direction and see if I can get it out of that U-joint. And then I'm going to flop that U-joint around and see how stiff it is. That'll tell me everything I need to know right there. Well, you see now I got that bolt looking right at me, staring right at it. So I can get right to it. Let me go get the tools, I think. Eh, I don't know. Looks bigger than a 10 millimeter. I think that's probably a 12. It's probably metric, but I'll find it. I'll let you know. There we go. My extension is on it. I decided to use a short one. Uh, it wound up being a uh, wound up being a 13. I thought it was a 12, maybe. It didn't look like a 13 to me. 13, you could use a half inch if it's a 13. It's it's really really close. So I got it all on here. Put this in the right direction. I'm gonna have to have both hands here. Let me crack this and then uh, I'll get back with you. Have the bolts out. I do not see on there anywhere any thread locker. So I don't think anybody used thread locker when they put that on there. But it was. It, it did take a little bit of force to crack it. To get it going. So that's out. Now I'm going to try pulling that shaft down. Trying to get as close to this exhaust manifold as I can. All right, come straight down. That was way too easy. Yeah, this this union is not really that stiff. not that bad at all but it does it does stick it should flop all around so I'm gonna soak it real good and keep working it past its limits here because you know this thing doesn't really move that much it doesn't have that much of movement to it so the more you go past its limit that it normally travels you can you can work it looser so that's what i'm going to do here do th i'm going to do this right here i'm doing right now while i'm soaking it with the hand i have holding the camera and then we'll get back well i've been working on this for about five minutes it feels like it it's 30 but I turned the wheel a little bit and I still haven't got this thing to the point where I want it. I want this knuckle just to flop right back down when the weight of it by just by the weight of the of the unit itself. I mean it's not that hard, but something I've determined the amount of resistance I feel on here 
is the same amount of resistance I feel on my steering wheel. I mean, it's, it's equal. It's exactly equal. So I'm really thinking this is it. This direction, not too bad. It's not really that bad. But I can work this direction a whole lot, a whole lot easier and get a lot more movement on it than I than I can this way. This way is it's a little harder on the finger, you know. Anyway, it's it's getting there. Of course, when you get up here, it gets a little stiffer, and all the way down at the bottom. That's, that's what I meant about I want to take it to its limit. Move it in positions it's never been moved before. And then in the area that it's working on a normal basis, it will be even more limber. But I'll keep working at it and keep spraying it. I'm using a combination of blaster and WD-40 and what I'm planning to do I just don't really want to get that all over my hands it's hard to get it but anyway what I normally do is I get let me just go get it and show you all right here's what I'm talking about never sees I'm gonna coat the thing with never sees get down in there and get it all gobbed up on there and then Whatever amount of blaster and WD-40, doesn't really matter. What, whatever gets inside, because you know, probably 75%, 90% of this stuff is running off. But whatever does get inside of them, them bearings, if it has the never seize in it, or anti-seize, uh, never seize was the original manufacturer of it but if I can get the anti seize in there um, I'm gonna be better off in in a long-term fix which is what I want don't really want to have to be doing this again I will but I'd rather this be a long-term fix so I'm gonna get back at it next time you see it it'll probably be all silver I wanted to mention um, you know when you're anti-seize gets all gummed up and it starts uh you know looking more like some kind of uh paste in there than it than it does liquid form what you can do bring it back to life here is just spray a little bit of wd-40 in it and then mix it all up and it'll rejuvenate it and bring it back to life and and you'll have a brand new bottle of anti-seize. I've had that thing forever. It goes a long way. Believe me, you get that stuff on your hands, you'll see how far it goes. You'll get it on your car seats and your face and everything else. Anyway, it's my little tidbit. I'm still at it. If you look down here at it, it's a... Uh, Here's a good shot. Here's a good shot. Yeah, I don't know where is a good shot. There. There. If you look at it, it's a. Uh, it's got a lot of. Got a lot of never sees on it. So does my fingers. Uh, I uh, I tied up the steering wheel to where it stays in one position here because uh, this this back part this joint and the one below it are the ones that are the stiffest and I had worked on this one here a lot on the bottom trying to force any kind of lubricant in there so now I'm working on the other side and it feels like it's getting better got a lot of that uh, got a lot of that 
graphite in the never sees in there so I keep washing it away and I keep reapplying it and I wish I had some kind of machine that could uh, maybe if I could hook my saws all up to this thing and da 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 da, -da back and forth a million times because this is this is kind of hard uh, it's kind of hard on the guy's back um, leaning over this thing I got a I got a pillow that I normally use to work over these fenders and kind of helps you out but it's all the way over there in that green car and uh, I don't feel like walking all the way over there and getting it so I'll just grin and bear it and keep at it Well, I have worked and worked on this, and it was almost to the point where I was saying good enough, and then in this one direction here, started stiffening up again. This direction here, I mean, it, it's, it's good enough. But this way here, it's getting worse. And... Not sure why, but it it is stiffening up. So I tried pulling on this here a little bit, and it seems like it seems like this whole shaft will come straight out with no problem. So, so that's what I did. Pulled the shaft out. Still feels like it's hanging up on the inside. Let me go look on the inside and see what's going on there. I went ahead and got that red mat so I could lay my big gut on it. Let's see here. Oh yeah, it pulled all the way out of the... of the steering shaft. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I guess I could have... Uh, unbolted it but I thought it was going to uh, I thought it was going to slide out of that lower piece it just looked like it slipped on there didn't know it was going to pull the whole kit and caboodle out it may be a problem we'll see see if it'll slide back in all right but for right now I got to get it the rest of the way out Looks like the only way I'm going to be able to get this out is to take that bearing, looks like a needle bearing, take it off and pull it out through the inside. I think that universal joint will fit through that hole because this knuckle here doesn't look like it'll fit. Well, it can't fit through the hole because the bearing's going to be there. So I'm going to take that bearing off and pull the whole unit out, see what I got. Well, I got the nuts off. This here still doesn't want to really cooperate and come off like it should. I'm not sure what this is trying to focus on here, but I'm going to try to do this while I'm only... I can only see what's on the camera. I'll pry this bearing off and yeah, it looks like I got it loose enough Let's see if I can get this whole thing out Alright, 
that's off. Let's see if that knuckle will come out. Nope. Nope. Denied. That knuckle won't come through there. Still too... Still too big. Doesn't look like it will. Let me finagle it a little bit here. See if just maybe... You know what? It might come through. Oh, look at that. It does come through. And what's this? Water leaking out of here? I got... Okay, here's what I determined. Um, if I'd have taken this collar off, I did not see it. This went on here, and there is a little, there's a little flat spot, a little flat spot on here, right here. So, this went on that way. If I'd have taken that one bolt out, then uh, I would have been able to pull that whole shaft out underneath the hood and I wouldn't have had to pull that bearing out or, or anything else. So, um, yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. If I would have done that, but then again, it, it still could have pulled that whole, that whole column out uh, because this was a little bit hard to, to release. It didn't, it didn't come right out. So I'm going to work on that U-joint. I already tried to put this back up in there. It looks like it's going to go, but getting the... You know how that goes. Getting that kind of spline to line up, it's going to be emotional. So we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, I got the shaft sitting in some dot three brake fluid and uh, some transmission fluid concoction mixture that I made. I didn't have any diesel. Thought I did. Don't have no diesel fuel. So. That brake fluid is a good penetrant. It'll get down in them nooks and crannies and uh, and soak in there. And then I'll work with that in a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here to the uh, get my nice uh, my nice throw rug out here. My dog mat. <clears throat> And I'm going to see if I can look up in here. I want to look up in the inside of that. That shaft housing there. I don't know. Can you see in there? Can you see what's going on? I want to see if that shaft is in the middle. I can't really tell. Yeah, that's that might be a booger to line up because I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh, perturbed if that steering wheel is not straight when I get through here. I'm gonna have to keep working on it. Well, while cleaning this up and looking at it, I found that there is a key on that. It is a keyed shaft. See the little flat part in there. I don't know if you can see it. That little flat part, little flat spline is bigger than all the other ones. So this goes back in there only one way and that's kind of good and kind of bad because I'm going to have to find exactly where it goes to get it shoved up in there. Um, but when I do get it in it's only going to be one way. I mean it only goes in one way so I'm going to go ahead and try to put this in now and see how difficult that is. I'm going to grease it on up and I wanted to I wanted to show everybody what I just went ahead and and filled up my grease gun. And this is this grease here is awesome. I think I think everybody ought to use it. Um, it's Lucas, made by Lucas. So it's got Lucas in it, and it's also fortified with anti-seize. I mean, I don't know how much better you can get. You got grease with Lucas 
and anti-seize. I mean, I love Lucas products. Um, but if it's got Lucas in there and anti-seize, I will tell you this. I have, um, I've got a lawnmower. I've got a zero turn right there. Looks like the tire's flat on it right now. But that thing I have had uh, for probably six years, five, five or six years, maybe longer. I probably had it longer than that, maybe seven. I've never put spindles on it. Um, I grease it every time before I use it, and uh, I put 20 pumps in each spindle, and I have never put spindles on it, and that's, that's kind of uh, unheard of. So it's good grease. I always buy it and uh, keep it on hand. I got one more left, so that means I got to buy some more. Well, I'm going to work on that shaft. Where did I put that thing? There it is. I'm going to work on that shaft right now. All right, I put some of that good grease in that shaft. That'll help, uh, supposedly, help me, help me get it in, help me lubricate it. I might put some around that plastic piece, too, just a thin, thin layer. And uh, before I do, before I go in with it, because... Uh, I tried to push it in there before and it seemed like that that bushing or whatever you want to call it seemed like it was uh, holding me up a little bit. So I'm going to do that first. Alright, I got a thin layer of grease all the way around it. It's pretty good. I notice some of my tabs are broke off there. But I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure that'll be just fine. They're probably just put there so some idiot doesn't pull it out. Well, let's see if you can you can see what's going on here. I've got to go in here, and by the looks of things, it looks like I'm going to have to be right about here. Oh, I forgot. I want to make sure these little tabs are lined up here. There's little indentation, little notches on the... I might need just a little bit of help on this here. A little, little knock-knock. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is take this uh, little slide ring for this collar off so I can slide this collar back. I think the collar is holding me up. Well, I was able to get uh, the collar off of there without too much problem. Um, I used my little uh, pick tool and I was able to get it started and then I used a screwdriver for the rest but this little collar I think is is what's holding me up from being able to push that um, push that shaft up inside there so now I can see what's going on I'm gonna try to get this shaft up in there without the collar of course it'll be sloppy but um, I'm gonna see if I can get it up in there and get it lined up then I'll find out the spot where I need to be and what I'm dealing with here on this end and then I can go ahead and put that back in. Alright. Let's 
see, let's see. This is the area I thought that how it was supposed to go. That's all the way in. Still not grabbing on anything. So I got some other. Oh. Oh. That's what happened. I can feel the arm up in there. It fell down. Just like what I was hoping didn't happen. Okay. Well, I can do this. But after I find the right... See, I've got it on the shaft right now. So that means I could put the I could put the plastic bushing back on there and then once I find the right place then I can just push it back in okay well that was good to know let me uh, it's gonna take me a few attempts but I will get it I'm confident let me put that bushing back on and the in the collar all right I got the, everything back together including the, the retaining collar ring thing now I'm gonna find the right spot for this see what it is is a shaft See how there's slop in here? That top shaft just fell down. Listen, I got it picked up now. Hear it? I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, it's picked up. It's fallen down against the bottom. That's why I couldn't get the this uh, bottom shaft. I couldn't get it in all the way because it was going over top of the other one and getting jammed in there. But if I can get these, these lined up like I had them just a minute ago, which I will, it's just gonna take some time. Gotta hold my mouth just right. I've done stuff like this before not impossible I just got to get it up in the right position See, it's locked in now with the steering wheel, but the splines aren't lined up because you got that larger spline on there. So I got to pull it out just enough to turn it one notch without losing it. Let me try it again.
what I'm doing is I'm using my left eye for looking at the steering wheel. And I'm just backing it enough to to get it at, to get it turned with one notch. And one of these notches, I'm going to win the lottery. And it's just going to slide right back in, slickered and snot. In. Well, where's my knocker at? <clears throat> well, that's all the way in place. It took a few attempts. I had to go all the way around. I was probably just a few teeth away. But I got it. That's the main thing. It's in there. Locked in. Alright. Now time for the U-joint. Now here's my concoction. And as you can see, U joints are nice and limber now, but it's not all from soaking. Um, you know, I learned a long time ago with U joints. Um, when you put them together, sometimes you get, sometimes the caps are a little bit tight. So, if you take the old uh, love tapper here and you wrap on it right here on the end of the cap, kind of gives it a scoosh more room. What it does is it, you're hitting it this way and it's bringing the cap up that way and it gives it just a little bit more room and they were still binding up a little bit and uh, I had to give them a little bit of tap on there and you can't tap it like you know like you're slapping your wife on the butt uh, you know a little love tap you gotta you gotta give it a good little uh, wrap like you're kind of mad at it and do that a couple times on both sides. Don't hit it hard enough to break the ear off. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what it took. And now they're, now they're flopping around like, they're, like they should be. Matter of fact, the one that, um, the one that I said before was, uh, kind of, was okay. <laughs> it's the, the one that's the worst now. But I think that's got it. And as you can see, there's a lot of never sees on there. And, uh, yeah. That's the way, that's the way you want it. So, if I ever had to do this again, I'll have a new part to put in. I'm not going to be messing around with this no more. I'm going to get this thing all put back in burning daylight right now as John Wayne used to say burning daylight all right I've already got the, the shaft stuck through 
over here. Um, if you can see the see the U joint, I just push that that on through. Um, I'm gonna put the <coughs> the bearing in now. I don't know how much of it I can do while I'm well nothing. Anyway, I'll get. I will get that put in all the way and put up here in the slot. And that won't be too hard. Right, it's all back together. And you know the problem that I had getting that thing out and the little clips that were broken off on it. And you know, I had to hammer it in there. I had to tap it, give it a little love tap to get it on up in there. But I just want an insurance policy that it, that that's going to stay up in there and not just fall out. So I put a redneck hose clamp right here. Um, that'll keep if that up there ever ever gives way and decides to drop out that's going to stop it that's not really it's not really rubbing right now i got a little bit of breathing room on it but at least my shaft is not going to fall out and i'm going to lose my steering while i'm driving down the road happy go lucky so just a little insurance policy i think it's all going to hold but uh that right there is going to keep keep it from falling all out all right i'm back here under the hood glad to be under the hood again man that's kind of that's kind of hard down there on, on somebody's on on my back uh i'm starting to talk like uh like the guy from vice grip garage you ever watch him he's pretty informative i i like watching him I was watching his videos last night. Anyway, I'm starting to talk like him. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Oh, how'd this get locked up down here? There we go. All right, I gotta get this here lined up with this here. almost there shoot there's enough never sees on that it should just slide right in well let me get both hands on it and uh, maybe I'll be able to make something work that U joint was a whole lot easier when it was frozen. I got it all lined up, and you can uh, you can see right through the uh, the bolt hole there. So it's all lined up good. I got it started, and then it only wanted to go in halfway. So I got the old uh, got the old claw hammer out. And right on that little lip right there, I was able to to knock it right in. Because I knew I couldn't get a regular hammer in there. So, but I knew the claws on a claw hammer, I could tap it. I tapped it right in. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Went right in. So now, I'm going to see if I have any Loctite. I really want the blue Loctite. Put some Loctite on this bolt and then get it in. I got the bolt started already with my with my hand. I actually put the extension on there and started it, but it was still all by hand. <laughs> I haven't got enough resistance on there yet to oh might need to turn this the right way. That helps out a lot. Helps to get your finger out of the way too there. Alright, let me 
put the That ought to be good enough. Well, that's all together. I'm working like a champ. My steering should be good now. I am very anxious to try it out. So, that light looks like it's just fine right there. That's straight. My power steering unit's making the regular Ford sound now. It does feel better, but I'm going to have to take it for a drive before I know for sure. Oh, I might want to get this fire hazard out of here. All right, let me clean up all my tools. There the engine is burning off all that blaster and WD-40 I soaked it with. Looks terrible, but it's going to be burning for a while. 